Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Tata Power Q4FY23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Dr. Pravir Sinha, Managing Director, the Tata Power. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, President. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining the call. I am joined today by my colleagues, uh, Sanjeev Churiwala, CFO, uh, Mr. J.B. Patil, Financial Controller, Kasturi and Rajesh uh, from the Investor Relations, and other members from my finance and corporate communication team. Uh, as all of you are aware, uh, uh, India's power demand continues to be very, very robust. In fact, uh, the power demand grew by nearly 7% in the last quarter, but by nearly 9% in the whole year. And this has seen the growth right across uh, all areas. Common generation grew by 8%, renewable grew by 18% on year on year basis. And this uh, is expected to continue in future also. Normally, the ratio of power generation growth to our GDP growth used to be 0.94 uh, in the last decade, but in the last five years, we have seen it to increase to 1.11. And uh, we expect that with more and more of uh, the economic activity in the country, this will possibly in, get enhanced in the coming years. Uh, we have seen that uh, the uh, international thermal coal prices have uh, reduced considerably from a high of $400. Uh, it has come down to less than $200, and it will further stabilize as we move during the current year. And uh, this also demonstrates uh, that the price of power will, over a period of time, come down, especially those plants uh, which are operating on imported coal. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, the government is pushing for renewable capacity addition, and they recently came out uh, with an order whereby they are targeting to auction nearly 50 gigawatts of uh, renewable capacity, which includes solar, wind, and hybrid solution storage. Uh, and this uh, will get added, in this, uh, this will be bid out in this year as also in subsequent years. So uh, a huge amount of push is being given by the government. They are very clearly brought out which will be the uh, agencies which will carry out the bid and how they will do this bundling of power along with their existing uh, generation capacities, especially NTPC and HPC and some of the other uh, public sector undertakings. On the Mundra, uh, we are pleased to inform you that uh, our plant is operating four of the five units. Uh, the fifth one is under maintenance and uh, uh, under section 11. And uh, barring Haryana, all these states are drawing full capacity of power from this. And uh, as you are aware, under section 11, we get a full pass through of the cost of uh, power generation. That means the full cost as well as the full fixed cost and all other related costs is a pass through. And uh, uh, on similar lines, we will like, get it uh, now. And similar order was issued earlier uh, in, in January by CRC for the last section 11 period. Uh, moving to the financials, Tata Power has again reported a very good quarter, uh, which has shown excellent performance from all our businesses, our existing generation, liquid, gas, and hydro have done very well. And uh, so also our existing transmission distribution and our new areas of renewable uh, EV charging. And uh, this has shown that uh, we have, again, uh, uh, this is the 14th consecutive quarter in which uh, we have shown an uh, increase in tax. Uh, our tax for the quarter is 939 crores. Uh, and uh, it is uh, higher than the last year. Similarly, the revenue has grown in this uh, quarter, and has also a EBITDA 
which has increased by 38% to 3,101. Uh, for the whole year, Tata uh, Power report, uh, reported a very strong revenue of 66,000 crore, which is nearly 32% increase from the previous year. And the previous year itself was an increase of more than 30% from the year before. Uh, and with the EBITDA of nearly 10,000 crores for the first time, it is crossing an EBITDA of 10,000 crores and a PAT of uh, 3,810 crores. Our renewable capacity uh, uh, growth continues to be there. Uh, we have nearly 6,600 megawatts of renewable projects. Uh, out of which uh, we have installed 3,927, and the balance 2,669 is under various stages of implementation. And hopefully, in the next 12 to 18 months, all of them will get completed. Uh, during the quarter, uh, uh, TPREL, which is the renewable arm for the developing utility scale projects, uh, our own project uh, got orders of 200 megawatt from. The MSEDCL, as also the green shoe option from PTDDL of 255 megawatts. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to get large number of uh, orders for our solar EPC business, and uh, we have nearly an order backlog of 17,000 crores, uh, consisting of 4, giga, 4 gigawatt of projects to be implemented. Our uh, plans to set up the 4 gigawatt cell in Module manufacturing plant in uh, Tamil Nadu is on track, and we expect the uh, modules line to be ready by September, October, and the cell line by the end of the year. So uh, we are very much on track, and this has been one area of concern uh, of uh, how do we ensure that the uncertainty of supply as also of price is taken care of. And hopefully, once the cell and module line comes, uh, we will be much um, Quicker and better to execute these projects within the cost that we have built. Our rooftop business uh, is seeing very good traction. We installed nearly 300 megawatt in Q4, and we also won new orders of 400 uh, megawatt uh, in the quarter. Um, we have a very good order uh, uh, backlog of nearly 468 uh, megawatt. Uh, cost worth uh, nearly 1,900 crores. Uh, we have seen that during the year our rooftop business has grown many times uh, up and we did a total installation during the year of 780 megawatt with a revenue of nearly 2,770 crores. And as all of you are aware, we used to be a very small and player in this market, but we have done very well in, in this market. Our, uh, uh, cumulatively, in fact, our solar rooftop portfolio has expanded more than 1,600 megawatt, and we are uh, we are the largest and the biggest in the market at present. And uh, this is right across uh, in, uh, uh, commercial buildings, industrial buildings, and also residential buildings. We have uh, also in the last quarter installed nearly 4,000 solar farms. And we have uh, nearly 97,000 solar pumps running in, uh, right across the country in various states, uh, which is the highest by any private sector company. Uh, in uh, the green mobility space, uh, we continue to grow and uh, have a lot of partnerships. We recently signed up with the Coimbatore Municipal Corporation, as also with Key. And uh, we have more than 3,778 public and semi-public EV charges and nearly uh, 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 30,000 uh, home charges and we expect that uh, this will grow in the coming years uh, by adding public charges as well as free charges and home charges. In our TNT business, uh, we continue to perform very well and have been given huge number of awards in different uh, areas, whether it is in terms of transmission operations in Mumbai or the distribution business in Delhi, Mumbai, and in Odisha. And uh, all our distribution companies have been doing exceedingly well. Uh, specific mention is to the Odisha distribution business, uh, where all the four discounts have uh, reported very huge reduction in AT&T losses. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have seen has 
is that uh, during the quarter, uh, the pack from the Odisha discounts has increased by nearly 30%. And for the whole year, the, the Odisha discounts have, uh, have reported a pack of uh, nearly rupees 253 crores. Uh, we have also been very conscious that our balance sheet should be very healthy. And our debt has been reduced by nearly 2,800 crores in March quarter. And our debt is now uh, 35,328 crores. Uh, this is uh, because of very healthy operating performance, equity infusion by our strategic partner, and also working capital release. So a uh, lot of our investment, uh, and last year we did nearly 6,600 crores of investment, has come from the internal accruals and the savings that we have done. And uh, we expect that going forward, uh, when we are targeting that in FY24, we will do an investment of nearly 12,000 crores, uh, which includes the investment in the new manufacturing plant, uh, renewable projects, uh, both group capital as well as utilities, <coughs> and our existing transmission and distribution businesses in Delhi, Mumbai, Isa, will be able to uh, get most of this money from our internal accruals and the operating profit that we make. Uh, acknowledging our efforts on debt reduction, S&P Global Ratings have upgraded uh, Tata Power's consolidated credit rating from BB to BB plus, and standalone credit rating from BB minus to BB with a very stable outlook. Tata Power has also been awarded the India's Best Annual Report Award by Free Press General and Grant Thornton for 2021 uh, for the quality of financial reporting and the disclosures. Uh, Tata Power continues to be moving steadily in its long-term aspiration to uh, build various businesses uh, which give sustained performance, as has been seen uh, in last so many quarters. And uh, this is uh, also uh, visible in the improvements that have been seen in various operational and financial metrics in each of the uh, quarters and in each of these businesses. Uh, I do look forward for your continued support in this direction, and uh, I uh, look forward to uh, answering your question, which uh, between Sanjeev and me, we will try to respond. So with that, I request Faisal to open the floor for q and Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, Dr. Sinha. Uh, my first question is uh, on the other income in the PNL for Q4. It seems to have gone up to 8.7 billion rupees versus 2.59 billion in Q4 at 522. What's driving the increase? Uh, Sanjeev Chulai here. Uh, let me take this question. Uh, when you look at uh, Q4, I'll also draw your attention to the full year as well. Uh, particularly, a big amount that you see is, uh, is on account of dividend from Arupmin. And since so many people tracking Telepower stock, as you're aware that a few years back, we had sold our, our stake in Arupmin mines, uh, and we were kind of waiting to get our, our full consideration back. Happy to report that uh, a large chunk of the consideration close to about 900 crores have been received now, and we are in the process of of winding up this complete transaction. Uh, in the process, we also had about 500 odd crore of shareholders loan line that has been converted to dividend in our favor. And because this is a non-core asset sitting in the book, this is reflected in other income. Uh, so, so that is one. Uh, second, of course, uh, uh, this is the profit that you see. And there are two other transactions that is also written here. Uh, what you see, let off is a thing. Uh, is possibly in one of uh, item of 183 crore positive. Uh, 
So that is because uh, we, we also had, because of the situation that uh, during January, February, March, uh, we hardly run a mudra plan, and there were some take or, uh, pay or take obligations for some of the logistics shipment providers. We had provided some penalty for them over 100 odd crore. Uh, and uh, Tata Projects uh, was also in the, in, the, in the process of cleaning up. And as such, Tata Projects posted higher losses. Uh, on account of that, we had to provide 232 crore. Uh, but I guess uh, when I look at the overall as a year, uh, which is also important for you to consider because this will have a bearing as to how we look at it next year. So while we have this 512 crore uh, dividend from our which is set up a more of a one-off, uh, but we also had a hit of almost 478 crore, almost equivalent because of Tata Project's uh, losses, which, which will not uh, incur. And for the full year, we kind of took almost close to 200 crore of provisioning. This is just provisioning uh, for, uh, you know, always contract assuming that the shipments that we had promised will not happen. And as a taken pay obligation, we have taken a provision. But uh, now that the Section 11 notification uh, is imposed and all our plants are running, so hopefully we will we'll be able to do many of the shipment as we go forward. And likely there could be possibility of some reversal also happening. What, what is the provision related to shipments? I did not follow that. So uh, we, we have a back-to-back tie-up for bringing our coal from Indonesia uh, to our Mudra plant throughout the year, uh, assuming that all the four and five units will be running. But given that uh, during the year, as you are aware that we had uh, uh, PPA, uh, we, we had Section 11 and notification to December, and for January, February, March, we had hardly run the plant. We were not able to use those shipments. And as such, uh, we, we had to kind of contractually uh, provide for that, assuming that uh, this is a notice contract. But given that now, uh, from, from April onwards, uh, we see all the four units running, hopefully we'll be able to meet the contractual obligation. Sure. So just to clarify, both the Tata project hit as well as uh, this hit on shipping costs will not be part of other income, obviously. They'll be appearing in their respective places uh, as yes. share of associate income and uh, the share of uh, above the EBITDA line. Yeah, absolutely. My second question, uh, you know, is related to the JV uh, and, uh, you know, associate profit in Q4. Uh, the share of uh, profit uh, has fallen sharply to 179 crores uh, in Q4 uh, 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 versus what we did in the first three quarters of FY23, which is close to about 3,000 crores. So the customary slide on breakup uh, for JVs and associates has been removed from the presentation deck. Uh, can you provide color on performance of, uh, uh, you know, Indo Coal and Tata projects in particular? And, uh, you know, uh, especially Indo Coal because it's such a significant portion of your business. Yes. So, so let me give you some, some high-level color on this. Uh, uh, quarter four has been uh, a significant quarter in terms of uh, what we see happening on overall coal prices globally, especially the Indonesian coal prices. We have seen a softening of the Indonesian coal prices happening. But the way that the, the currently the regulations in Indonesia are, they are still supposed to pay a royalty, a basis a certain fixed slab. That the government has now changed. So while the prices were falling down, uh, uh, the, the Indonesian coal mines had to pay still higher royalty. That is now, hopefully in the next two, three months, we'll start seeing some, some reversal and improvement happening over there. So that is one. Uh, second is, uh, as I said, on the on the part of uh, Tata projects for the full year, we have booked uh, our share of uh, JV losses of about 480 crores and about 200 odd crores in the last quarter. So that, as, as a result of that, you see a softening in our JV overall profits. What is the outlook there? Given you own 47% odd stake in that company. Uh, I think Tata projects uh, uh, kind of looks like have been able to clean up a lot of past uh, losses, uh, legacy losses. Uh, Tata Sons have now infused uh, 1,500 crores uh, in, in that business. Uh, and to that extent, our stake, which is 48%, is now diluted to 31%. Uh, but, but given the current planning, 
uh, we are looking forward to Tata projects making some profit uh, in Network Depot. So against uh, against a loss that we have booked of 480 crores in F23 full year, we are expecting some profit to come in next year. So to that extent, yes, it will benefit us. So when did your stake reduce to 31% and so Tata Power has not infused any equity in Tata Project? No. So the stake reduced in the month of April. April 23. April 23, yes. Tata Sun has into 1500 crores. Yes. Okay. Uh, just one more question on Mundra. If you could give us some sense on EBITDA for Mundra UMPP in Q4 and FY23 and fuel cost under recovery uh, per kilowatt hour over this period. Uh, any color on receivables which are outstanding under Section 11, uh, which have been booked but not yet realized? So section 11 uh, actually means the full cost pass through and, and, and to that extent we have started the, the, four, the four plants already. Uh, but during the year as you see we, are, we were under various different regimes. He was earlier in the PPA and then there was a special requirement uh, to start the plant where the second grade was agreed. Then we had section 11 for a PPA, then we the last three months under PPA. So it's, it's quite a complex, uh, you know, working to kind of just narrate everything on the co uh, on the call itself. Uh, I would request you drop us a mail, and, and I should kind of you know, get back to you with some better clarification. Thank you. But yeah, I think uh, what's also important to note that as of now, our four plants operating under uh, under Section 11, and the Section 11 uh, is as of now till till June, and and given the past train. We would expect that this to be extended to September, October. So, just the total receivables that are due to you for Mundra UMPP uh, after you know imposition of Section 11 last year, the bulk of the fiscal was under Section 11. So, uh, are you getting those uh, uh, cash flows yes. from the associated? Yes. Uh, we are continuously getting our cash flows, and even in the latest uh, appeal, uh, CRP said. Uh, to do all the discounts to pay up uh, 50 percent. So our net dues is not a very very significant amount. Uh, so you know uh, to that extent, uh, we have kind of fees with us. Huh? So we, and, and we also, also have uh, by yeah we also carry LCs with us. So I uh, think uh, the total amount due is about 300. Uh -huh. How much? Yeah. Yeah. Section 11 the amount is 400 crores. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. But we have been receiving this amount even in the month of uh, April itself. We have already received, uh, you know, close to about 150 odd crore. So we don't see any concerns uh, with, with respect to our receivables. Sure. Those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, and and you know, uh, good to see performance improving. Indeed, the remaining under control. My first question is: Is is the understanding correct that uh, in terms of pass through, when you say pass through, you are still assuming the 30% share in coal profits to be passed on to the customer, and you retain the balance 70%. Well, uh, see, the, the, we have to go as per the uh, Section 11 order issued by CRC. So what it says is that whatever is the cost of coal, you will be given. On the mining profit, if you bring coal from KPC and, yeah. uh, and use it in Munda, to that extent, you will have to pay 30% of yeah. your chain of the profit. So this is only for, for the quantity of coal that you bring from Munda, uh, bring from KPC. So, uh, so if you do not bring, you will not. So, in the last year when the Section 11 period, very small quantity, I think about 15% was only brought from KPC, that was from outside. This year, there is no coal that has come from KPC, so there is uh, virtually no impact uh, of the profit share. Oh, okay, that's very interesting. And uh, any progress uh, that we are seeing with your off-takers now, even given that there is a suspicion of you know, high power demand going into summers. Uh, any progress on how the Mundra PPA will be uh, redone? 
See, the, the, right now, it, the uh, Section 11 is still 15th of June. So, uh, hopefully, uh, by that time, uh, the procurers uh, will finalize. Uh, because till that time, in any case, we will be operating the plant uh, under Section 11. And would the understanding be correct that Section 11 implementation is the best case scenario that you have? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because Section 11 gives me a full path through of the cost uh, yeah. without any assumptions. That's it. My second question is on the Odisha. The profitability is indeed quite good. Uh, are you worried on account of any repairs or is the collection also uh, going on quite nicely? So, Odisha in the last quarter, as we had a collection in each of the discounts in the range of 140 to 150 percent. And for the whole year, the collection uh, has been nearly uh, more than 100 percent. So, I think Odisha has done exceedingly well in terms of the collection. And uh, if you see the trend, uh, it has been able to clear virtually a lot of uh, the old outstanding. And of course, we had the ECL provision, and based on that, we have already cleaned up a uh, lot of receivables which are not expected. And, and that is primarily because uh, the issues on the way the billing was done. There were a lot of customers who were not there, but they were still built. So I think the cleaning up of operations has been done. And um, uh, what you see as a profit is, is a, a profit after considering all these uh, things. So uh, hopefully from next year, we will not have any such impact on uh, our profitability and uh, we will see the real profit coming out of Odisha. Mind you, when we had bid, at that time we had considered that for the first three years, we will have no profit, we will have losses. In fact, the cumulative losses that we had considered was a very large number. Uh, which uh, 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 right from year one we have been making profit, so it's actually a big turnaround story. Okay, that's good. that's very good to hear. Thank you so much. Last year, a renewable business, uh, you know, given that incrementally a lot of bids are going towards round the clock uh, kind of model, are you prepared to to bid for similar uh, projects in terms of? Ability to capture storage, uh, trading, etc. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, the, we have very strong solutions on the, uh, on round the clock solutions, and we are now already offered a number of solutions, which is a combination of solar and wind. Uh, we are also now in the process of offering the solar, wind, and storage. We we are actually now implementing a project uh, on a. Uh, uh, third party EPC basis of uh, solar and storage. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are very much equipped. We are also working on our uh, pump storage projects. As you are aware, we already have hydro power plants and we are working mm -hmm. on that. So we will definitely be coming with uh, very attractive solutions and very cost effective solutions uh, to consumers uh, uh, to provide them. Uh, uh, 24-7, round-the-clock, peaking powers, uh, as is the requirement of the customer. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. If I look at uh, what is in the pipeline, uh, this is about uh, 2.7 gigawatt, it's almost kind of uh, more tilted towards hybrid at the moment. We already have 1.4 uh, gigawatt uh, in, in the pipeline, uh, and this is happening for the first time because uh, we have seen Many hybrid uh, bits coming up, and our wind ratio has been great. So, to your point, as Dr. Tiller said, as and when we, you know, keep on bidding, uh, we will be working towards it. I think to you participating in the round the clock project, which is why I asked, but it's great. Thank you so much for this clarity. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, so I had a question on the uh, renewables uh, hybrid project. What are the current discovered tariffs and versus the fall in the module uh, or the cell prices? Uh, where are the ROEs now uh, at the current discovered tariffs? Or some color on that? See, the no color can be given on this, sir, because it all depends on where you are setting up the project. If I set up in Rajasthan, it has a different context of tariffs. 
the five set up in gujarat it has different in karnataka it is different so it is very difficult to have the same brush to say right so what sort of tariffs will come in which state also it depends on uh, uh, what is the cost of land in those areas and uh, what sort of uh, wind speeds and uh, what sort of uh, solar intensity is there so uh, it, there is no generalization that can be done as regards the cost is concerned uh, we had seen the cost of modules uh, go up to 32 to 34 cents it has come down in the range of about 22 to 23 cents so i think it has come down drastically so also the cost of sales and cost of wafer policy on everything has come down Uh, because of more demand, more manufacturing capacity that has been set up, uh, not only in China but in other parts of the world, including ASEAN countries, and uh, also capacity additions which are expected in the country. So I think uh, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, the slide 19, which has been shared with you, will give you a much better perspective. And so, what is the current PLS being realized in the hybrid projects versus the PLS we're getting earlier on standing on solar, for example, or even in the solar projects themselves? Have the PLS gone up uh, compared to what we were getting last year or something like that? Uh, the PLS uh, for different locations again uh, depends on what sort of weather conditions are there. So, if uh, the weather conditions are good, uh, in some places it has gone up. Some places the weather has not been very good. Uh, also, extreme weather conditions we have been seeing, like in the month of April, uh, last few days of the month, uh, there was a lot of rain and the cloud cover. So, the generation has not been good during that period. But the balance of the month, it was very good. So, it all depends on how it is changing. Also, uh, uh, we have given the slide which gives you the operational highlights. So this is slide 27, and you can see okay. that the uh, availability okay. of uh, all these parts. Sure, sure, sir. Uh, and so, just one uh, question on PPSSL. It seems that the profitability has gone up, but the sales is down. So, is that just because of some kind of uh, Completion of projects uh, in Q4, the operating income is down from 3481 to 2958. That is, the EBITDA is up from 77 to 85, and the PAT is also also substantially up. Yeah, you are absolutely right that uh, we uh, we were a little selective in terms of executing the project, and uh, and that's why I, uh, we didn't execute projects because the cost uh, of the modules was a little higher. And uh, I think that was a good decision because uh, by deferring those projects, we will be able to get the benefit of lower costs in future. And also, uh, uh, some of the high uh, uh, high profit margin projects we could complete in the last quarter, which has given us better EBITDA margins. So, will the steady state margin go up a little bit in CPSS? Is it safe to assume that compared to what we have been seeing in the past? And th that's what is our game plan. So uh, we definitely expect now that the prices are coming down, our margin should go up in future. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Baranidhar Vijay Kumar from Amanda Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So you uh, mentioned that for the fourth quarter, the Tata project's loss was about uh, 200 crores. Am I right, sir? Yeah. So what would be the profit for the coal companies uh, in the quarter? Sir, I think uh, if you can send the mail with plans share separately with you, so I think when you see the JV profit uh, gives an indication on on uh, softening of the of the coal price or softening of uh, the profit. But if you need specific details, we can share with you offline separately. Sure. Uh, my second question is on Mundra. Now, uh, since uh, the section eleven was operational from mid of March, uh, but we were not operating for uh, uh, reason that uh, we were waiting for some news to come in. So, what has changed now that uh, we have started the operations? Because the money came uh, consequent to the decision. So they paid the money, uh, and a very small amount of Section 11 payment is due now. So virtually all the money has come, and that is why we 
as a package the plant. And so also the other states, Punjab and Haryana, has been asked by after to make payment in two weeks time. So that's why we started from six weeks after. Okay. Um, so, uh, could you quantify the amount that uh, came in, and uh, was it in receivables which was realized as cash? Uh, in, uh, cash inflow. It, it, it will get reflected in this quarter because this order was issued on uh, in uh, I think around 16th April. So, uh, it will get reflected in this month or this quarter results. Okay. My final question is on the other income clarification you gave. So, uh, net profit booked on uh, consideration got for Arupin sale, you said is 512 crores. Am I right, sir? Like which is booked in other accounts. Hey, as I, as I clarified uh, uh, to, I think, Amit, uh, we have sold this uh, Arupin mines about a few years back, and uh, we were supposed to get a total remaining consideration of close to about uh, 1200 crore. Uh, we have been able to now receive a major consideration already in this year. So we are in the process of winding up this transaction. There was a shareholder loan of 512 crores that was standing, which has been converted to dividend. And given that this is a non-core asset, to that extent that 512 is treated as part of the other income. Okay. So what is remaining to be uh, incurred uh, in a similar fashion in the future, sir? No, so now what is remaining is to, uh, to kind of get the remaining amount, uh, which is close to about uh, $27 billion. So we are hoping that money should, should also come very soon, and thereafter we will close the transaction. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Girish Achipalia from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, actually a few things. So, why have we stopped disclosing the coal uh, profitability from this quarter? We've been doing it for several quarters now. Uh, uh, coal profitability is kind of reflected in the, the GB uh, profits that we are sharing, but we are not exclusively giving exact numbers for the coal mines because that is not warranted. But if we need uh, separate details, we can just drop in a mail, we can always share. But sir, we've been giving it for several quarters now. How do we understand the results? Because it's been a big uh, number on your profits for several quarters now. Uh, what happens is that uh, we don't look at our coal mines on a standalone basis. No, absolutely. That's why I want to look at it completely. That's why I want to look at Mundra. Because you stopped giving Mundra, and now you stop giving coal. I'm wondering what next, because Atapa is always known for very strong disclosures. Yeah, so the slides also going down, sir. Uh, pardon me, but uh, I mean, like for example, I mean, I can't reconcile your renewable uh, business, PPREL and WREL. Why would revenues be down, YOY, in quarter four? I think, I think uh, there are a couple of questions that is there. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, in terms of the presentation, this time, if you see, uh, we have made a dramatic change. In terms of simplifying the overall presentation, you know, the is an inherent part of the disclosure, right? Coal is an inherent part of your profitability. Yeah, so as I Mudra is now not a standalone company. Mudra is part of Tata Power Company itself. So we are not segregating Mudra from there. And then, per se, if you leave a separate closing the operating parameters on Mudra as well, right? And coal also, you the last quarter, you were disclosing everything. No, I think what we have very clearly said, uh, also that, you know, the right so time, quarter three, kind of quarter, in quarter three, there were slides 20 uh, and slide 21. There were two slides. Yeah, you're right, Girish, but we don't want uh, the number to be misused by the competition in other places. So and hence, you want the competition here, sir. In so terms of competition here. Pardon me, but who's the competition here? Well, I think uh, we can always have this uh, different views. But the fact is, if you need the details, we can provide to you. So, uh, tell me, what is the renewable, uh, why is the revenue, uh, renewable revenue down? Why, why? For uh, TPRE and WRE? Last year, we had a one-off uh, revenue and profit that was booked. Removing the one-off, why and why is higher? So, how much, what is the one-off, sir? Please, can you help us? Because the slides don't have any details. Okay, yeah. uh, that we can give you. 
the the one off is uh, basically because uh, last year we got some um, uh, orders uh, which was uh, order from the regulatory commission because of that we had taken uh, the one off right yeah do we know what is that sir please yeah one one eighty two crores across two entities TPRL and WRL yeah yeah that these are the two uh, entities because the others are very small ones. Okay, and if this is a revenue impact, what is the PAT impact, please? If this is a revenue impact, what is the PAT impact here on this number? No, this is not the revenue, this is the PAT impact. Three fifty crores. Three fifty crores, huh? It's about three fifty crores. But we can check and let you know. I, I don't have it offhand. So yeah, but that's right. I, I know the uh, the PAT number is one eighty two, but the uh, the uh, revenue number I can share with you. Okay, sure. And then capex, we will incur capex of seven thousand six hundred and fifty-six crore as per your cash flow. Can you help us? Like, how much has the renewable gross block gone up by, and what are, where the other broadly where the money has been spent out of that seven six five six capex that you have incurred the this year, and what's the outlook for it? Five six, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's some six thousand. It's a six thousand six two six seven. So out of that, we can give you the data. I'm referring to your consolidated cash flow statement on page number twelve. That's it. Oh, got it, sir. Because we do the elimination in that, sir. Because so I can give you much broad number. Yeah. Our total capex on the console, all put together, is about six thousand five hundred odd crore, roughly, given take. And if you look at our reservables. In spite of some of the deferrals that we have done, uh, our total capex is close to about 3,500 odd crores. Okay, and what is the outlook for FY24, please, for capex? Uh, we already have in the pipe. Okay, uh, 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 if you have already seen the disclosures, uh, we have uh, commissioned about close to 4 gigawatt. In the pipeline, we have close to about uh, 2 okay. gigawatt. 2 yeah, 2.3. Uh, gigawatt, 2.6 okay, right? 2.6 gigawatt, and our order book as of now is about close to 17,000 crores, right? So, so hopefully uh, we have a much higher capex uh, in F20, uh, F20, 24 next year or the current year. How much should I assume, sir, for my module? Uh, uh, our total capex sir, for uh, FY24 is about 12,000 crores, which consists of about 3,000 crores for the manufacturing plant. Sir. Okay. And uh, they would be about, mm -hmm. I would say, 4,500 crores mm -hmm. in the renewable for mm -hmm. group captive as well as for utility scale. So that's the type of numbers that we have. And then uh, we have, of course, capex for our transmission and Odisha form and Mumbai and uh, Delhi form. So that, that's what, and then there is some capex which is there for our uh, SGDs for the whole business. So is it fair to assume, given that your operating cash flow was this year 7,100 crores, mm. and if you were spending 12,000 crores next year, next year also you will have a free cash flow negative year? Is that a fair comment to make? Well, it's a wrong assessment. Uh, I told you that uh, this year also, uh, we were, uh, whatever capex we did is from our free cash flow. Uh, similarly, in the next year also, uh, I will do my capex more or less to the free cash flow that I have. In fact, I could also add, while you're looking at the, the, the free cash flow that is available, uh, for example, in, in 23 uh, full year, uh, we had an operating cash flow close to about 6,500 odd crore. But at the same time, we also separately received uh, equity infusion of 4,000 odd crore, which is also kind of fitting with us, right? And, and, and this equity will be utilized next year for the purpose of our capex also. Okay. Understood. So 12,000 crore of capex is what you're saying for FI24. Yes, thank you so much. We want to deliver a higher operating cash flow and also use the, the existing equity uh, to kind of draw down to, to deliver our, our capex aspirations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so one simple question: When we talk about Section 11, uh, it gives us a full pass, uh, you know, cost pass through 
Uh, do we also get a margin through that, or it, is it only just cost uh, that we are recovering? So uh, we get the full uh, fixed cost. Uh, so whatever is our fixed cost, ninety five pounds, we get the full fixed cost. Uh, so the, that is assumed to have a, a built-in margin. <coughs> Okay, and secondly, regarding the section 11 only, right now it's applicable till June. Is there any possibility of this becoming permanent uh, going ahead or, you know, go soon to make any assumption? It will not be permanent, but it will, again, uh, if, if the summer condition continues and there is a shortage of power, then uh, it may get extended. Like last year also, it started uh, from 5th uh, uh, May onwards to the 30th, 30th June got extended till the 31st of October and then got extended up to 31st December. So it all depends as to what is the demand supply and what sort of weather conditions are there. And uh, very difficult to predict uh, what will happen. Okay. And one question regarding the CAPEX plan that we were discussing previously. Uh, what what CAPEX are you planning to spend on transmission and distribution in FY24? I'm sorry, I missed a few of what you mentioned. Ah, so I mentioned to you that 3,000 will do on uh, the uh, manufacturing. Uh, we will do about 4,500 for, uh, 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 for, uh, for our renewable projects. And then uh, we have some uh, capex for our generation business, GM, GD, and all that. And then you can consider maybe about 3,000, 3,500 uh, But the exact numbers we can give you separately. Yeah. Okay, got it. And, so, and one last question. Yes, yes. And he will be able to provide you exact. But approximately it is in this range. Okay, understood. And this one last question regarding the module uh, manufacturing project. Uh, you know, I think a previous participant had already asked, uh, you know, what, how will the economics be affected? Uh, you know, now that the solar module and vehicle cost, everything is going down. Uh, is your internal IRR also changing or is it more or less the same since the realization as well as cost both are going down? So, so uh, when we had considered uh, uh, the manufacturing at that time, the cost of module was 18 cents with 40% uh, basic customs duty. Uh, with that also, we were making very good uh, returns. So uh, in, uh, now uh, the module prices are still 21, 20, 22 cents. Uh, so we would still be doing very good. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshil Solanki from Equitary Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, team. Good evening. Uh, my question is on the solar pump side. Sir, any update on the price revision that is expected in the Kusum 3 I don't know that. Yeah. If it happens, we'll let you know. Yeah. I can't predict but these things. It all depends on the bidding process, and I think uh, we should hear. hear uh, Potentially, year ending has just happened, and I think in the next one quarter, uh, we get to know the new prices as well. Okay, and what is the internal expectation on the price hike? Uh, what are we expecting? How much percentage? Price hike on? The revised prices. How much See? percentage increase are we budgeting? Oh, well, See, that is the business that we do if we get prices to our requirements. If we do not get, we will not go and do that. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for taking me again, sir. I actually got confused with one figure. So uh, you mentioned that the RE uh, capex is going to be only four and a half thousand crores. So am I reading something wrong here? That means they're going to be adding just about one gigawatt this year, or is there something I'm reading wrong? Because if you if you are going to be adding just one gigawatt and you are going to be expanding module capacity, the total in the additions will be just about ten gigawatt this year, or I'm reading this wrong. I'm not able to make out. Can you take this question offline with Rajesh tomorrow? Yes, sir. 
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन विल टेक दैट एज अ लास्ट क्वेश्चन आई नाउ हैंड द कॉन्फ्रेंस ओवर टू द मैनेजमेंट फॉर क्लोजिंग कमेंट्स थैंक यू एवरीवन आई नो यू स्टिल हैव अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस माय सजेशन इज प्लीज कनेक्ट विद राजेश एंड वी विल ट्राई टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू ऑल द क्वेश्चंस यू हैव also on some of the aspects uh, on uh, the details which have been shared if you feel that you want uh, more uh, details or micro information on that uh, we should be in a position to share that it is just that uh, there are certain requirements uh, in terms of governance uh, where we would like to pass, uh, share information in a way that is uh, more acceptable to the market and also to the other stakeholders so that's why uh, these changes have been made but the purpose of changes is to bring more transparency and uh, to make it simple to read it. and uh, uh, many a times uh, many of the analysts have got back that it is very confusing and so a lot of effort has been made by radesh and team to come up uh, with the revised presentation but uh, we always keep on improving as and your feedback will be useful for us uh, to uh, improve and uh, provide more data and information which is relevant and is useful for your department so we look forward for your uh, comments on that and we look forward for your feedback uh, which will help us to make it much more uh, and much simpler and much more detailed as is required but um, uh, in any case uh, whatever you would require we will submit that offline you can connect and we will be more than happy to share So once again, thank you everyone for joining, and uh, take care and hope, uh, hope to catch up soon in person. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Tata Power, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.